so you can use a whole lot of stuff to catch panfish. Um, they're pretty aggressive little fish, and they'll bite a whole bunch of stuff. You can use lures, you can use live bait, you can use artificial bait. Again, you can even use beef jerky and Slim Jims is what I've seen. Um, but I'm going to specifically focus, again, on the artificial bait, but also on, on bobber fishing. Um, and when you think of bobber fishing, usually you think of one of these. Uh, little red and white round bobbers and and these will work uh, they come in multiple sizes if you do have these try the smallest one possible um, but the reason I don't use these is just because they have they have a lot of surface area um, and they're really round so there's a lot of resistance so if that bluegill or whatever you're fishing for grabs a hold of your bait on your hook and they feel that resistance they'll let go a lot easier than if they don't feel it as much. Um, you know, again, they'll still bite. I'm not saying you won't get, get hookups because you, you will, uh, but it's just there's there's better ways to do it. So I would avoid these altogether. Um, even the smaller ones I don't like too much, but, you know, if, if, if that's what you prefer, those will work. Another kind of bobber uh, are these. These are, the, uh, these are made by Thill. And you can usually buy them in packs of two to four, um, and I've used these as well. And I I don't like the slip ones. I like the ones with the with the springs on them there that you can move up and down. They're pretty easy um, to rig up. But I don't really use this one just because it's so it's so long. Uh, I don't really need all of that. So what I have is I found these um, these smaller ones by Thil, uh, and it's pretty much the same thing, just a lot shorter. And these work great. Um, they're really, they're not too skinny because they have those really skinny stick ones as well, which you could use. <laughs> they're not too skinny and they're not too wide. Um, so they will work just great. Again, any one of these will work. This is just my preference. Um, I like the size of it. I like the low profile. Uh, it's not a huge thing sticking out of the water. You're still pretty visible. So this is what I use and again, uh, any one of them will work, but this is just my preferred method. Um, and again, it has the springs on there. You just wrap it around, and if, when you want to adjust it, you just kind of pull back that spring. Uh, and I would tie it around twice. If it's just once, it's still pretty loose, so I'd tie it once and then put it back in again. Um, and then you can just adjust it easily. Again, you can use lures, and, and I'll do another video on lure fishing for panfish. Multiple multiple kinds of lures that you can use um you know grubs from grubs to uh inline spinners the the rooster tails the blue foxes the panther martins uh all those work great and i have them all um these are little crappie little crappie baits um kind of little little jigging minnows um again all of these work work great you can use little spoons um, little little jigs as well uh, again all these things work uh, but but what I use primarily and what I really catch fish on is is the bobbers and and one of these um, let's see if it focuses in it's it's a 132nd ounce jig head um, and the pack, I believe, comes with 12, made by e Eagle Claw. Um, and they come in multiple colors, black, white, um, uh, like a neon pink, chartreuse, chartreuse pink, chartreuse white. Uh, they come in multiple colors. I, I usually use the black and the white just to make it a little bit more realistic, but depending on the water quality and, um, you know, whether it's murky or clear, depending on what it is. So those, those work great. And that's all it is, really. I, I don't I don't add a split shot just because the jig head is weighted, uh, and so it it goes down pretty pretty easily. Um, and once it's down there, again, I will I will take the jig head. I'll either take the maggot and thread it through, um, or I'll take the the minnow and I'll put it in as well. It's it's really simple. This is this is my setup. So I have my bobber. I have my jig head already on there, um, and this is a really light, lightweight pole. <clears throat> uh, it's just a small Shakespeare pole that I bought a while back, specifically just for panfish fishing. I think it was like 25 bucks. Really simple, really cheap. Don't need anything special. I'm using four pound, um, 
Trilene and Invisigreen line. Really easy. I like it. You can use two pounds. You can use four pounds. You can use six pounds. I just prefer the four pound just because where I go fishing, there's a lot of vegetation. So I need a little bit stronger than two pounds to be able to sometimes pull those fish um, as they kind of dive back into uh, the vegetation. And it, again, it works great for me. Um, I really haven't lost any fish. The line has held up. The jig heads have held up really well. And again, um, I'll just thread the minnow through and make sure that that hook is still exposed with the um, with the maggots you can thread it through and it can even bend a little bit they'll still bite that uh, you want to make it as straight as possible but but sometimes mine still bend around and they're fine as long as that hook is, is just lightly exposed at the end just so that you can get that good hook set on there um, and again really light stuff um, ultralight rod cheap stuff I, you know I'm, I'm a fisherman on a budget so I don't have a whole bunch of money to be spending on a bunch of different rods and reels uh, so I went and bought the the, the cheapest one um, and it it's it's held up for me the only thing I did replace was the reel and it's just a little bit uh, just it was like a fifteen dollar reel honestly it was another Shakespeare reel and the only reason I switched it up is because I could go backwards I could reel backwards when I needed to and that was a uh, I like having that. So, um, again, really cheap stuff. Um, jig heads come in pack of 12, I think three to six bucks. Again, it's not too expensive. And then just get yourself one of these and it'll last you a long, long time. Like I've had these uh, for a while now, for, for a few months, uh, and I'm still not out. So, um, Again, you can catch some great fish, and then just some pointers that I wanna uh, that I wanna give you while you're fishing, while you're uh, bobber fishing for panfish, because there's some things that you do want to know, and um, let me just share some of those tips with you so that you'll be able to get on more of those fish. Okay, so when you're fishing for panfish, uh, you're gonna go looking for them first, and they're they're usually pretty easy to spot. Uh, you'll see the 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 kind of the ripples in the water, especially if it's bluegill, uh, they they tend to stay uh, usually pretty close to the surface. Uh, they they don't go too deep generally. I mean they can, uh, and I've I've found them in in different water, but generally when I pick them up on like my fish finder or when I'm fishing for them, um, they're pretty shallow. Um, and on one of the lakes that I have here, that's really close to my house. The, the the bluegill will be closer to the surface and then the crappie will be closer to the bottom. Um, and so it's just, you, you throw your bobber in there and generally when I'm bluegill fishing, I'll leave between, depending on how deep it is, between six and 12 inches between my hook and my bobber. Um, right now it's, it's probably about 12 inches, um, maybe less actually, maybe about nine, 10 inches something like that um, and when I'm when I'm bluegill fishing or red ear sunfish fishing they're, they're generally pretty shallow so I don't need to if I can't find them shallow I will make it a little bit deeper but generally I don't need to do that um, so 6 to 12 inches I would say uh, or the most 18 inches for for uh, for sunfish um, and then another thing is when you're fishing for them you'll see the bobber in the water and the way you know that they're, that they're starting to hit is you'll see it begin to kind of tug like that um, and what you don't want to do is pull the hook when that's happening because they're, it's not in their mouths yet what you want to do is wait until they commit to it and that bobber is not tugging anymore but it actually goes down under you can still miss fish I've still missed a lot of a lot of fish um, but that's when they've really committed to it they're taking that bobber down they've put that that bait in their mouth and they're starting to run with it so that's when you want to set that hook and you'll bring them out and those hooks do great you can use 164th ounce as well I use 132nd ounce and I haven't had an issue with them um, so again it'll be ticking it'll be um, uh, you know being being hit and then it'll take it down they don't generally mind the bobber um, unless again it's it's really it's really round and then there's a lot of surface area and then with crappie what I've seen is at least in my lake, they're on a lower, in a lower water column, and so I will raise up that bobber and have more distance between the bobber and my hook, um, and I'll usually do up to three or four feet even, uh, just because they they get a lot deeper. And when I'm using the minnows, the difference between the minnow and the maggot is the maggot you could actually just leave it there. The minnow you kind of wanna 
uh, either reel in very, very slowly or just kind of tick at it uh, just to kind of give that minnow a, a movement so that they see and it doesn't look like if it's dead it's actually a live minnow kind of moving and then what you'll see sometimes they'll they'll play with it but usually with a crappie they'll just take it they'll, they'll inhale it they have those big uh, little mouths there and, and they'll just kind of inhale it and your bob will be gone and you can set the hook um, and that works great um, so again this is artificial baits uh, cheap gear you don't need anything special you don't need anything high-end it'll work for you it'll get kids fishing I know my my daughter uh, likes going fishing with me when I do bluegill fishing um, and you can catch a whole bunch just off of a dock I, I the most I've caught is like 17 and one at one time just off of a little a little dock there in our lake and then with crappie too. When you do go looking for them, you want to look for places usually with cover, uh, either under trees, uh, you know, overhanging trees, or a place with with reeds. Um, you look for places um, that have like cattails and just different reeds in the water, and you'll generally find them. they're usually pretty close to shore, so you don't even need to get out on a boat. You can get it from a dock or anywhere else. Um, and then once you get on a school of them, then it's even better. So this is panfish fishing with bobbers, small hooks, and artificial bait. So get out there. Hopefully you give it a try. Uh, get yourself some of this Berkeley stuff. It's great. Berkeley Gulp, Berkeley Gulp Alive. It works amazing. Um, and I mean, it's I'm not sponsored or anything by them. I just, I just think that their stuff is great uh, for panfish fishing. So get out there. Get yourself a, a, a little rod and reel, uh, some light line, a bobber, a small hook, and a, a tube of one of these or a little bottle of one of these and you'll have a great time fishing for panfish. So get out there, hopefully you have a great time.